Good evening and welcome to HealthQuest. I'm Deborah Arneson, your host for the evening, and tonight we have a great show for you and an excellent guest. This is David Quigg. David, thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. And David is joining us this evening from Doctors Data, which is here in Chicago, and this is a lab that does multiple testing protocols. We're here tonight to talk specifically about ADD and ADHD, which is Attention Deficit Disorder and Hyperactivity Combined, right? It sure is. Okay, so tell us, because everyone is so concerned they have ADD. It's like the catch-all phrase of the 90s, as I see it in my practice anyway. Everyone thinks, oh, I have ADD, mm -hmm. I can't remember anything, I can't focus. Um, I'd say probably 9 out of 10 clients that I see come in and complain about it on a daily basis. So is it an epidemic right now in the U.S.? It is an epidemic in the U.S. Um, it's about five times more frequent in the U.S. than any other country in the world. Um, unfortunately, it's also hmm. become a fad because people think it's cool to take Ritalin. Cool to take Ritalin. Right, which is, a, which is an amphetamine. Right. Um, there's a strong genetic component. It appears to be increasing with frequency with each generation. Uh, however, there are very strong environmental and nutritional factors that can exasperate the symptoms of ADD or ADHD. So, are, now, do people acquire ADD, David? Is it something that you can, you can go through your life and be seemingly just fine and all of a sudden, boom, one day you've been no, diagnosed? No, absolutely or? just the opposite. Okay. It uh, seems to be passed much more from male to male. It's about five times, five more to prevalent. one more prevalent in uh, father to son than mother to daughter. And what do you think the contributing factors are? There's a couple different major opinions. One of the most prevalent opinions is that it relates to excessive use of antibiotics in hmm. very young children, um, frequently associated with um, repeated ear infections hmm. and the the antibiotic excess uh, destroys good and bad bacteria in the gut mm -hmm. and it causes a proliferation of yeast which is undesirable we all have a small amount of yeast but right. when the antibiotics wipe out the the good bacteria which help us digest right. food and produce vitamins mm -hmm. like b12 mm -hmm. and uh, vitamin k and things that we need the yeast take over, and the yeast release uh, chemical toxins right. as well as specific enzymes that chew away at the intestinal wall. Hmm. And once that damage happens, then the body starts to absorb absorb things that it normally wouldn't. Hmm. And we like toxins. Toxins, uh, partially hydrolyzed um, foodstuffs, proteins, and hmm. therefore you can get two two major effects of that. One is food allergies because these pieces of digested food normally wouldn't be getting into the blood. Right. And now the immune system recognizes these things as foreign. Mm -hmm. And secondly, some of these peptides are actually have um, activity in the central nervous system. They act on uh, opiate receptors hmm. and there can actually become somewhat of an addiction to these things. Yeast, yeast thrive on sugar, right. and once you start pumping in the sugar, the yeast proliferate and produce more of these things, and a lot of times people with this condition will definitely crave sugar. Right. That's pretty right. common. The other thing about yeast is um, why do we use yeast when we make beer? It produces alcohol, mm -hmm. and so people with chronic yeast overload in the upper gastrointestinal tract are constantly releasing alcohol into hmm. the system. So again, you have another addiction. Toxin, too. So it's like a, a vicious cycle. Aldehydes are very difficult for most people to actually break down. Right. Are they not? Right. Really, really creates problems for the liver. Right. Exactly. Well, you interact with hundreds of doctors and healthcare practitioners around the world, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. In your lab. Mm -hmm. Okay. What is the general consens consensus that causes and aggravates ADD and ADHD? The most basic underlying cause, I think, the consensus I just described mm -hmm. is um, an abnormality in the... There's agreement then in the medical community yeah, or the environmental medicine. Something's, something's amiss with the gut. However, um, even when you correct 
that problem and it can be corrected in, in children and adults with AD. It's not only children. The, you, it doesn't appear that you can cure the quote disease or the, the abnormality, the disorder. It doesn't appear that you can ever cure it. You can greatly ameliorate the, the mm -hmm. symptoms. Um, for example, you can decrease the hyperactivity, uh, you can improve social skills, you can improve attention in school to a certain point, mm -hmm. um, but even adults generally don't ever completely outgrow, so to speak, mm -hmm. the disorder. You know, it's interesting though, David, I had a client who came in to see me about, oh, I'd say four or five months ago, and it was the most astounding case of ADD that I'd ever seen. This woman, she worked, she was a chemist, and she mm -hmm. worked with organo compounds. Right. And she literally was like all over the place in my mm -hmm. office. I mean, it was like, you know, come back, come over here. Mm -hmm. Couldn't get her to focus. And I said, you know, you might want to consider quitting your job or finding another line of work, which she did. And in the course of treatment, which took about four months with her, mm -hmm. she is completely a different person. Mm -hmm. She now works for me. You know, she quit her job and got a job with me, actually. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing. She's bright. I mean, she's actually right. very brilliant, very focused. She's yeah. very, um, she's lost the compulsive, you know, kind of like distorted, mm -hmm. you know, mindset that she was exhibiting. Right. So it's amazing to me just see with, to see how nutritional intervention right. and using supplementation and taking away the toxic compound that obviously contributed to her problem. Plus she had very high copper, which we'll talk about mm -hmm. in a little bit. Um, high calcium, high copper, high mercury, high lead, high aluminum. She had it all, you know. So a lot of that was certainly contributing to her issues. But it was just marvelous to see her heal. Right. I'd never seen anybody quite so spastic. You yeah. know what I'm saying? In the way she approached yeah. um, learning. Some of the brightest people in the history of, of the world have been characterized as ADD or ADHD, and it's not all negative. Like you mm -hmm. say, when they, when they do focus, even the kids that are out of control, um, you described the most incredible case of ADHD. The, mo the most incredible one I ever heard of was the kid that came in, and the first thing he did was kick the doctor in the shins mm -hmm. and tear the place apart. Um, that component of it, you can help greatly. Mm -hmm. However, that person is still going to have times when they hyper-focus, and right. they can be geniuses in those moments but during other times, they're just kind of out there. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Yeah. Well, I know my mother actually took dystabestrol, which was a really nasty mm -hmm. drug, and my brother is extraordinarily hyperactive. Mm -hmm. I'm glad she did it with him and not me, because this child used to literally bang his head into yeah. his crib endlessly for hours when he was an infant. And he's very, he's brilliant. Mm -hmm. He has a genius IQ, but he's also um, extremely hyperactive. Right. Extremely hyperactive. There's a lot of crossover in some of the nutritional abnormalities that we see between autistic and ADHD okay. kids. So how do you um, actually explain, when you, when you see all the data and you, you've studied this extensively mm -hmm. because of your line of work as a, a PhD, you know, nutritional biochemist, um, how do you explain the propensity and the increase? Is it more nutritional? Mm -hmm. Is it biochemical? Is it a combination of uh, these toxic body burdens from heavy metals? I think what we're seeing right now is probably the result of the tremendous increase in the excessive use of antibiotics anytime. Okay. And I think a lot of that happens because we've got both parents working. A kid starts to get sick. You take him to the doctor. What does right. he do? He gives him the pink stuff. I want the bubblegum stuff, the antibiotic. You know. Well, it may be this, we'll put them on the antibiotic, that way you can go back to daycare and you can go mm -hmm. back to work. The, um, right now, it's something like 20,000 pounds of antibiotic a year is handed out in this country. Um, it used to be about 4,000 pounds Quick about fix. 20 years ago. So I think that a large part of it we're seeing is the astronomical increase in the use of antibiotics. And then on top of that, you have the bacteria becoming resistant to the antibiotics, so them developing super Many antibiotics. strains of, of bacteria. I think that's a big part of it. Um, plus, environmental pollution has gotten a lot worse mm -hmm. um, in our food supply, in our air. Our water is atrocious. Um, so all these things are adding, adding up and 
particularly if there is a genetic predisposition predis that it's really stacking up and we're seeing those. Well, effects. plus our foods are so much more compromised as well. I mean, the Department of Agriculture exactly. did a study two summers ago. They tested soil samples along the Mississippi Grain Belt and they found that, oops, the results were pretty astounding. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not only were there no minerals in our soil, but there were very heavy residues oh, yeah. of toxic, you know, garbage and organic right. compounds and chemicals and metals. Right. and. I mean, disgusting. It's actually legal to put uh, industrial toxic waste in liquid fertilizer and spread it around on our land in Illinois. I know it. For food crops. In most states, actually. I was mm -hmm. astounded to find that out a couple months ago. Yeah. I mean, it's amazing to me that you can use landfill for fertilizer. There's no federal regulation no. on fertilizers. Right. <laughs> but there are in vitamins, or they're trying to anyway. Right. <laughs> so right. go figure. <laughs> okay, right. tell me this. Um, how does the toxic metal problem affect nutritional status with respect to certain essential minerals? Um, there's, there are certain proteins in the body that we have that act as like little storage bins for essential elements such as zinc is okay. a great example. That same protein has a very high capacity to bind things like mercury, lead, and cadmium. So specific proteins or? Very specific proteins, okay. yes. And they're, they're designed to protect our bodies from these toxic metal insults, but they also have a dual function, and that is to serve as a reservoir for zinc. Mm -hmm. And so as we're exposed to more and more toxins, the zinc gets bumped and wasted, um, okay. which, for example, in hair tests, you frequently see zinc very, very high mm -hmm. in someone who has a lot of lead. Right. The lead is displacing the essential nutrient, zinc. Okay. And we need zinc as part of our own detoxification process, so it creates a very vicious cycle where mm -hmm. the toxic metals start to take over. So, okay, you know, what people don't seem to understand when you do a TMA, a tissue mineral analysis, a hair test, is when they see something very elevated, such as, we'll go to calcium, because that's mm -hmm. the one mineral we see elevated the most, at least in my practice. Mm -hmm. Calcium is elevated, and everything else tends to be pretty suppressed because I always refer to calcium as a bully mineral, right? It's mm -hmm. very dense, it's very heavy. It also tends to displace other minerals or no? Not really. Um, a lot of times with metal exposure, calcium will be displaced from bone okay. where you know 95% of it or 99% of calcium is in bone. It's so it's it the toxic element that's displacing the calcium. Right. So when you see it elevated in tissue, does that simply mean that it's sitting in tissue and it's not able to be accessed and brought back into the bloodstream, picked up and used to create new bone? Yeah, that's, that's the biggest problem, particularly okay. in women, is when you start to mobilize calcium, particularly at a young age, mm -hmm. um, when you should be laying it down. We've got a lot of young girls, young women, that are mobilizing calcium when they need to be laying From it down. From phosphates or soda pops, what? That certainly doesn't help. Okay. That, that actually binds it in the gut. Um, okay. all, the, all the diet cola um, is tying up calcium in the gut and it's never getting absorbed. Okay, you guys who are trying to grow and, uh, you right. know, boys right. too, I mean young, right. young men. So doing lots of phosphates and soda pops will tie up your calcium in the gut, right. which means you won't be able to use it and build strong bones. Right. Well, okay. even worse than that means whatever calcium you do have in your bones, that your body needs for other things, it's going to take it it's out of the bone. It. It's going to leach it out of the bone. Not good. And so when you get up around menopause or when the hormonal change happens, then it's too late. Right, right. Can't right. put back in what you never had. Right. So when we see an elevated calcium then, and it's in the tissues, how do we mobilize that out of the storage areas back into the bone? you got to figure out why it's being mobilized in the first place and correct that situation. So do we first look at toxic metals? Exactly. First, okay. first look for lead. If lead is the issue or if cadmium is the issue, deal with that. Remove the exposure and then start to get rid of the lead or the cadmium okay. and then the calcium will start to go back and be metabolized the way it should be. Right. Whenever you mention calcium, you have to talk about magnesium because right. the body can't use calcium without magnesium. So people that are taking large calcium supplements